Hey guys, welcome back to the Dueling RCA chassis project. Picking up right where we left off with the focus coil issue, I'm really kicking myself <laughs> that when I was probing it at the end of the video and was getting negative mega ohm readings that I didn't switch the meter to DC mode, I'm sure there was a small DC voltage being generated by the focus coil from some type of chemical reaction. It's too late, as you'll see, for me to try that now because I've already taken it apart. However, I can tell you this, when I had it in circuit, I didn't get it on video, I don't think, but I did put the meter in DC mode, and yes, I was getting some DC voltage. I didn't think much of it at the time, I didn't include it in the video because I thought it was from caps. They were either still holding a charge from when the set was last powered on, or it was caps that were holding a charge from the ohm meter. When you put your meter in, in ohms and you're measuring, it, the meter itself was putting some voltage into the set. And I thought something was leaking somewhere and absorbing a charge that was throwing the meter off. But now I think the, the circuit itself was generating its own internal voltage, like a bias cell, like having a battery in there. But we're going to try to simulate it with an experiment. So what I want to do is get some various metals and some paper towel and I've got some used evapo rust and we're going to get a damp and put so put some damp paper towels between two metals that's a battery I'm sure it's going to make a voltage let's find out let's talk a little bit more and try to examine what is actually going on inside of this focus coil I got some more comments cautioning me against doing what I did after the fact. One, um, one guy cautioned me that even if I got seemingly uh, a liquid out, that the evapo rust itself is probably somewhat conductive because it's kind of sugar water, which would be conductive. And even if it's dried out, the residue left behind may cause some conductivity issues. So what I want to do is unmount this, and I've already done some quick checks with the resistance between the leads and this case, and it does there does seem to be some continuity there, but it's in the mega ohms. However, that's with just a, whatever my multimeter is putting on it, a couple volts. When this is an operation, this has full B plus going through it into ground under normal operation they would be well let's see uh, so we're talking about this guy it'd be about 200 volts on it 215 volts so in other words break uh, conductivity can be deceptive it's conductivity at a certain voltage when there's a couple hundred volts on it it could be conducting a lot more it could have a much lower resistance with only a couple volts on it in other words it's breaking down and it's, con it's conducting much more at a higher voltage, I suspect, than at a lower voltage. But let's let's examine this more closely. I also want to try opening it up. So the way these are constructed is it's two pieces of metal put together, and then they just dimple it in at a few, well, half a dozen spots. So if I get a tool and uncrimp these, it's, the two halves should just come apart. Now this is a good one. That's the one that's bad. I need to unmount that. Um, it's entirely possible if I open this up and thoroughly rinse it out and dry it out and put it back together. All right, making some progress here. I used some vice grips to initially bend these back. Then a little screwdriver, a little tap from hammer. Finally, got a little gap forming there, and I, think I just got it enough that it's popping loose. I've never actually looked in one of these before. Oh yeah, we have moisture. We have moisture quite a bit. I'm surprised. So I had baked this twice in the oven. There's just one hole in here, and when I put this in a rust, I tried to avoid getting any liquid in there, but inevitably I did. And I rinsed it out thoroughly, and I let it hang like this for a day or so to drain stuff out. And then I baked it in the oven a couple times. And uh, obviously that did not work. But what's curious, I find, is that it's not flooded. And this is all insulated, and there's no obvious connection between these two. So why are we getting 
that response. Yeah, let's try to get this all the way up. <laughs> Probably good news the part is there's really nothing to grab onto. force on anything because this <laughs> curls around so you can't it's uh, in that pretty tight too <laughs> Maybe it's just trying to get some slack wire through a small opening there. Yep, that's it. It's just this wire being wedged in the corner is what's holding it in. Come on. There we go. Jeez. Alright, so clearly there's some residual moisture in here. I was puzzled at how that could be a problem. There's a little bit of moisture on the metal, so what? But this cloth tape is damp in areas underneath it. The wire should be enameled, which I would think would provide enough insulation, but at some point there's going to be a solder connection between these leads and the enameled wire in, in, inside. And this could be damp enough that between that solder connection and this and touching that. It doesn't take much. Unless you're talking about a lot of voltage. So it seems crazy to me that they can alter the operation of the set that much, but I say, don't do this. I'm doing this for your benefit. Don't ever do this. <laughs> you know, there's a term in the uh, trade called over restoring something. It's an important thing to learn with experience is when to stop. Uh, Things can be filthy, they can look gross and work just fine. So, yeah, beware. <laughs> Don't dunk parts in liquid that shouldn't be getting wet inside. All right, I'm gonna use the outside body of the focus coil as one side. And I'll start with a piece of dry paper towel. And I've got some aluminum, some copper, some zinc plated steel. Let's just start out with the aluminum and dry paper towel and go between this and go between this and even with that slight negative voltage let's go the other way slight positive let's put that in resistance mode nothing I'm curious that we're getting a very slight voltage even though this is this will be some slight moisture in this from the air I suppose but I wouldn't have thought that would generate anything. Well, let's try a little bit of the copper. I'm put these two directly together. We get zero. So let's go on the copper. I don't have a big sheet, but this strip should do okay. Again, slightly negative. Slightly positive. Ooh, and the harder that I push, the higher the voltage is going up. So I'm getting more. Uh, Surfaces are getting closer together. And finally, let's try with the zinc. Barely anything. Okay, let's try with a piece that's been dampened with some used evapo rust. So it's not only evapo rust, but also some. Iron ions. Oh yeah. Point three over point three volts. And if I go the other way, negative. And if I put this in resistance mode, there we go. Minus one and a half mega ohms. Similar readings. And if I go this way, it'll be positive. And it's higher positive than it was negative. Exactly what we were seeing 
when I was checking out the focus coil. Let's try it with copper. So this, this canister, I'm pretty darn sure is cadmium plated steel. In case you're wondering what that metal is, I guess like a NICAD battery. So positive 14 mega ohms and negative 2.9 which is awfully close to what I was measuring when I uh, had the real focus coil all put together on negative three mega ohms. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Almost a volt. We go the other way. Same thing, but in the opposite polarity. So yeah, there's no doubt in my mind that that is what was causing the problem. And yeah, the copper in the spool is enamel coated. So possibly some of the enamel coating has failed. But also there's going to be a juncture between these wires coming in and the coil. It's covered up by this paper. Under here there's going to be, which typically like coils I've taken over before, there's going to be a stripped portion of the enameled wire wrapped around this and then soldered. And there could very well be some exposed copper there and then the lead tin of the solder that was used so it's definitely not completely insulated so there you go we made a battery i made a battery unintentionally i made a battery and that was what was screwing me up things are coming back together nicely i figured well i had the corona dope out i might as well just use that on everything so i coated all the interior surfaces put a layer on the coil then wrapped it in captain tape now I'm putting it back together. Before I seal it, I'm going to make sure it still works. So this has been coated with a couple thin layers of Corona dope. I'll go back on like that. Then i got to crimp down all those seams. But before we do that, let's get the set back up on the workbench and make sure it still works. And then I need to reattach all, all the hardware to these two ears and get the springs and the screws and everything all back together. All right, getting to do another power-up test. Finished cleaning the chassis, got all the tubes populated. I replaced the belt with a rubber band. I know some of you didn't think that was the greatest idea, but hey, you know, it works. I just looped it around itself four times. Or so there's four loops going around. Look, it's not a super critical thing. It shouldn't need to get adjusted very often. The owner of the set's likely to just put the set on channel three or four and leave it. Uh, but it works. Just moves, has to move that little lever up and down. And it, it does the job. Uh, so the coil. I think I mentioned this, but I also baked it in the oven at 175 for 15, 20 minutes or so. And it was bone dry. Uh, I did that before I put on the uh, Corona Dope. Uh, so I'm going to put this set on its side and rig up the test CRT and just hook this up down below and if all seems well I will go ahead and seal it back up and permanently around it and you, you may have noticed that uh, when I opened this up this was not potted with wax so it's just kind of sitting in here and that's how I'm going to do it it's held very tightly in place by the uh, the two halves of this there's very little clearance uh, see there's, there's this uh, phenolic ring around here it's really held in place in the center and the outer edges don't touch so the uh, this this holds it firmly in place. You don't need potting. It's not floating around inside of here. So I, th I think we're fine just leaving it like that. All right, are we ready? Here we go. Just have it clipped in. <laughs> Sorry to say I've done this so many times. I could do this without consult consulting the schematic. <laughs> yes, yes. We've got our square back. Now, do we have any reception? Yeah, it's working quite well. Now, I'm still using the little bench test CRT. So it's definitely working in terms of the power supply, but to make sure it's working in terms of its focusing capability, we have to install full-size CRT so we'll try that next <laughs> 